It has been exactly one year since the Creepshow art drama went down, and when I say it was crazy, it was crazy as hell. Creepshow Art, also known as Shannon, got her shit kicked in pretty bad and pretty much got nuked off the internet, but things weren't over like people expected. Today we will take a look into the Creepshow Art drama and see how things are faring a whole year later for all of those involved and to see what we missed out on afterwards. Let's just say, there was quite a bit of stuff that went down after the initial expose. To give a little background information on Creepshow Art, she was a YouTuber who was very popular in the art community, though she did make a multitude of videos not having to do with art at all. She had gotten herself into a bit of drama before on YouTube, such as the Hopeless Peaches situation, but none of them had affected her career in a negative way yet. She would keep growing and growing on YouTube, and eventually made it to half a million subscribers, all before things came tumbling down a year ago. On June 2nd, 2021, Locale.farm, a website that is popular amongst the t-slash-internet celebrity crowd to pretty much just talk about what drama is going on and shit talk whoever they don't like, outright exposed Creepshow Art after she had been violating the website rules for a while now. The admins got her IP address and proceeded to show off as many posts as they could that she made on the site, and the things she said were far from what she would normally speak like on her YouTube channel and other social media pages. To say people were shocked is a vast understatement, as she would make post after post talking shit about her friends, namely D'Angelo Wallace. She would say how people only pretended to be friends with them because they don't want him to make a video on them, and how his content is stagnant and worse than her own because of it, basically projecting herself onto someone else. This isn't all she would say though, as not only would she talk bad about many other people, but she would also talk bad about herself to try and get people to lower their suspicions whenever she posted on the site. There was one post that caught my eye in particular. She said she doesn't rely on YouTube, but I think she makes a considerable amount on it. I've talked to a YouTuber her size and they make at least 20k per month. That mixed with the real life job, she's probably loaded pretending to be poor. Shannon goes into a little more detail on her finances, reiterating that she makes 20k a month and that she has a really new nice house. This is so strange, it's clear she's trying to brag about her finances to everyone in the thread, while also still trying to hide her anonymity because she had been talking shit about her close friends and acquaintances. It was so crazy to see it unfold in real time last year, because it was clear that she was trying to keep her tracks covered as much as she could. Unfortunately for her, she failed, and now people were on her ass for being a fake friend and a general piece of shit behind the scenes. Now as the days went on, people started to dog on her ass because she was a massive two-faced asshole and people don't like fake people like that. Creepshow Art wouldn't do much to settle the flames, as on June 5th she would make a community post on her YouTube channel, a community post that has since gone down in infamy. The post itself is very, very long, and there is not a single moment where she tries to take accountability for her post on Volkow. Instead, she tries to blame everything on this person named Amy, her supposed stalker for the past 8 years or so. Something I want you guys to see is that Amy isn't the real name of the stalker and just a pseudonym used to protect her identity. This little detail will be very very important later on, just trust me on this one. Creepshow Art goes on to say how it was Amy who was trying to ruin her life and did everything, not taking any accountability whatsoever and instead trying to feign ignorance while also blaming everything on this so called stalker of hers. People weren't falling for none of her excuses and so they would still keep trashing on her name as expected. They had seen the locale post the admins got together and her pathetic response on YouTube, and everyone realized that she's a two-faced liar and would do whatever she could to climb to the top of the social ladder, even if it meant faking her friendships and doing so. The comments on her post were riddled with people asking her to own up to getting exposed, to leave the internet, and general distaste for a person they once respected in the art community. It's a shame, really. All the evidence showed it was her doing, at least owning up to it would help ease the pain somehow, but she couldn't even do just that. And so so anybody willing to defend her up to that point shifted gears once they realized how delusional she was. At the time, it was safe to assume Shannon would just dip from her creepshow art persona on the internet for the rest of her life and things would end swiftly from then. People made their Twitter posts about the situation, expressed their opinions, and generally started to move on now that they learned one of their favorite content creators is a complete asshole not willing to take any accountability for what she did. However, the locale drama was just the tip of the iceberg, because let's just say Shannon had a couple more skeletons in the closet that were about to come out soon. On June 8th, Emily Artful, another art-centered YouTuber, came out with a Twitter post expressing her relief as people have finally learned the truth about Creepshow Art and how she truly is behind the scenes. She talks about how Creepshow Art had been stalking her for multiple years at that point, way before she even started her YouTube channel, how she threatened her family multiple times, and how she even got Emily fired from multiple jobs 
purely out of spite and hatred towards her. Emily claimed that her ex-boyfriend and Shannon had been harassing her for the past decade or so, and it all started when she broke up with him and got with Shannon soon afterwards. Emily goes on to tell everyone that she is gathering evidence for her very own video and for people to be patient as there was a lot for her to gather and sort together concisely. To say the anticipation was building rapidly is an understatement, as people were already gunning for Creepshow Art's downfall by this point, this was just icing on the cake if Emily was able to deliver, and boy, deliver she did. Just a few days later on June 12th, Emily would release her first video on Creepshow Art titled, Creepshow Art Has Always Been This Way, in which she goes over every single thing that has happened to her involving Shannon and her ex-boyfriend from the very beginning up until that point. The two hour video is a long watch, but the info she goes over proves to everyone that Shannon is a very calculated person with everything she does, and that everything was corroborated by her boyfriend Anthony. Emily goes on about her beginnings with Anthony, how the relationship was toxic and caused them to break off badly, only for both Creepshow and Anthony to start harassing Emily once they got together. One part even goes over how when Shannon claimed to be homeless, it was on their own accord and not because of a bad situation that she had been telling her viewers, showing her line to her fans from years ago. There's even one part of Emily's video that is just insane to look back on even a year later. It's the part where Emily is talking about one of the many fake accounts made by Shannon that had messaged her saying it was their little brother who had been harassing Emily the past couple years. Just take a listen to it yourself, it's utterly insane even a year later to listen to. This will most likely be my last time using this account. I do appreciate your time, and I hope from the bottom of my heart and soul that you continue to do well. I pray you are able to forgive those in your life, and I know you will continue to thrive. Thank you for at least listening to what I've had to say and letting me know that words have gotten to you. God bless. What a ripe crock of shit. During all this going down, I had very little understanding on who Creepshow Art was at the time given I was only a few months into my YouTube content creation stuff, but I could tell she was more than what her YouTube channel gave off simply by the way she carried herself. The expose on Locale and video by Emily only provided evidence for anyone who might have thought otherwise. She would only become friends with people if she felt they had something that she could use or if they had something they could use against her, but not a single person was prepared for the locale leaks and Emily Artful's video to come out, and at that, all within the short span of 10 days. Throughout Emily's entire video, I couldn't get the notion out of my head that Creepshow Art only started her channel to spite Emily, as the evidence throughout seems just like that. Another way to harass and belittle Emily, only this time Creepshow's career actually started to take off and she had to slow it down a little bit and turned into talking bad not only about Emily, but pretty much of every friend she ever had until it all came crashing down. As expected, Creepshow Art's recent videos started to get mass disliked bomb, people were writing comment after comment telling her to leave, and that the only way she could save any face would be to fess up to everything from the locale leaks to harassing Emily. Things were silent from her however, as it seems she dipped from the internet for the time being. All her social media accounts had been deleted by that point, save for one, her YouTube channel of course. The month started at a little over 500k subscribers, and by the end of the month she was well under that mark at 370k subscribers. The number would keep bleeding and people assumed that she ran like a bitch, but it turns out she had one last trick up her sleeve. On July 7th, Creepshow Art would reactivate her Instagram account and made a post claiming she was innocent, as well as her now husband trying to scrub his existence on YouTube in a failed rebrand. She tried to get YouTuber Gabby Hanna to make a video on another YouTuber ready to glare, and when that failed she went to YouTuber Tipster to get him to do something similar. When her manipulation failed yet again, she dipped from the internet and social media once more, and up until that point was the last time anyone had heard from her on the internet. Emily would go on to make a second video on Creepshow Art titled, Creepshow Art Did Not Work Alone, going into more detail on what Anthony and Shannon put her through with more evidence to show. At one point Emily shows how an account that harassed her was also seen in a video harassing Creepshow Art with the very similar thing that Anthony had said to her before. So there, this account was the one that was featured in one of Shannon's videos. At least one person in this galaxy thinks I bought my views and I bought my subscribers, which means someone in this galaxy thinks I'm made of such wealth and such opulence that I bought myself subscribers. 
I mean, thank you. That one account that had harassed her saying it was her little brother that had been doing all the trolling and whatever in the first video by Emily, she ends up proving that it wasn't some random little kid, but actually Anthony the entire time. Now this is a super important piece of evidence that I stumbled upon. When Britta Filter messaged me and went through the laundry list of harassment that I had endured, they mentioned having a grainy video of me singing and playing piano. That video is an unlisted video, and the only person I've ever sent the link to was Anthony. That video is still on my YouTube channel to this very day. I never deleted it. What kind of made my skin crawl after remembering this was the screenshot I had taken of the conversation. It starts with Anthony saying, trust me. I said, KK, let me log on. Oh, by the way, I have a video with some music I've written too. And he says, send them both. And I send the link. There's the music one. Ugh, it's telling me I need more space. And he says, on Dropbox, that was unrelated. That was for a different song I was working on at the time. Pretty creepy stuff. The end of the video goes over how Emily believes Anthony was the mastermind the whole time and used Shannon to further his agenda against herself simply because Shannon didn't like Emily. Even though the things that Shannon did to me were unconscionable and cruel, I believe that she was also a victim here. I believe that Anthony played on her hatred for me, as well as her emotional dependence on him. For God's sake, she dropped everything to go live out of her car, an experience she herself called absolutely miserable, just to be with him. I will never forgive or forget what Shannon did to me, and her being a victim doesn't excuse her horrible behavior, but I do think it's important we acknowledge that. It is a great follow-up video, and the stuff said only adds to just how much shit that Emily went through when dealing with those two people. By this point, it was over for Creepshow Art. There was no way for her to come back from this. Her internet career was officially done. Everything after this point was just more proof of how much of an asshole she and Anthony are. What started as another popular art-centered YouTuber on the surface was exposed to be a downright despicable person who only cared about herself and herself only, befriending people to keep them wrapped around her finger, and instead of talking shit to them to their face, would do it behind an anonymous message board because she was too scared. So the fact that all this stuff that she had been doing to Emily Artful for a decade now, it is very shocking, but it does follow up with the way she acts. Now months would go by and nothing new would come from the Creepshow art drama. People would make their videos and move on after exposing her for being a massive piece of shit. It seemed that Shannon had officially given up on trying to defend herself and fled the internet. No one bought her stalker story on her community post and the leak showed she was out for blood and was still trying to manipulate whoever she could in order to somehow shift things in her favor. To no avail of course. Things were quiet in the public light, but behind the scenes was a completely different story altogether as Shannon had one more plan to somehow shift everything into her favor. On New Year's Eve, Shannon would drop a two and a half hour video along with a massive Google document going over every single thing that had happened in Emily's life and trying to paint her as an unstable, crazy drug addict who shouldn't be trusted whatsoever. When I say this video and document goes over Emily's life, I mean that literally because Shannon goes as far back as to 2005 when Emily was a 13 year old middle school child and tries to use posts from way back then to somehow justify why Emily is a manipulative freak and punch down at her. If this isn't stalker like behavior and only proven Emily's point, then I don't know what is anymore. Speaking of stalkers, she even goes over the shit with her own stalker Amy, and what's funny is that Shannon says Amy is a real person and shows emails signed with the name Amy, yet in her community post from months prior, she said it was a pseudonym name used to protect the identity of Amy. This part is going to be brief, but Amy is not a reference to Emily. Amy is a girl who used to harass me online who I originally met on Stardoll.com when I was in middle school. As I say in the video, but Amy did not grow up in San Jose with me. We never knew each other personally, and she was someone I strictly knew online who lived states away from me. Emily tried to state in her video that that video was secretly about her, that I was setting a backstory up to one day say that Emily was actually Amy, and by simply calling her Amy, I was referencing her because according to her, I was trying to lay breadcrumbs online to paint her as a malicious stalker. Isn't that a kawinky dink? That right there is the most passive aggressive shit I have ever read and is also one of the many breadcrumbs that she started leaving behind that she had a quote unquote stalker named Amy. I think it's funny that she picked the name Amy. I think she deliberately picked a name that was very close to mine so that if I ever came out with allegations, she could be like, see, I even chose Amy because it sounds like Emily. And of course, she picked all the things that she did to me. So then I couldn't even 
come out if I wanted to, because then it would seem like I was copying her instead of her copying me. That is not the case. And it's also very stupid. The video I put up, which is still up, has various details that do not match with Emily. It would make no sense for me to say that Emily and I were friends online ever seeing as we never knew each other outside of her being a friend of some friends and one of my ex-boyfriend's exes before I even had a crush on him. Me stating that she grew up states away from me also does not align with her being Emily, seeing as Emily went to school in California and I know people who know her. It would make no sense for that video to be about her. In order to prove my case, here are the cringy emails that Amy and I sent to each other in middle school. So guys, which is it? Is Amy a pseudonym name or did Creepshow Art just self-report herself as a massive liar without even realizing it? I mean, we already know the answer to this, it's just fun to see her lie in real time and not even realize it herself when making the document in the video. Think about it, all that time to write up the document, record the video lines, organize that data, and she couldn't even keep her own lies straight. She even goes after Tipster at the end of the video and calls him names for not picking her side. It's some childish shit, but it is funny to see her complain about it nonetheless. I said I would address Tipster, so this is for him. Tipster said that if I was able to prove that I didn't do what I was being accused of, that he would apologize to me. And to that, I say, fuck you, you disgusting person. You maliciously attacked my husband because you yourself couldn't scroll down far enough on Emily's Instagram and find the multiple posts that debunk her story that are still live. <laughs> you, you're a journalist, but you just couldn't do that. There is a reason your content gets fewer and fewer views than everyone else in the YouTube commentary community, and you keep being beat out by everyone else. And that's because it's terrible, lazy, and reductive. You should rename your channel Secondhand News because you can't be fucked to actually research anything before you open your ugly mouth. You watch someone else's video and you say what they said worse than they said it. You aren't a reporter, you're not a journalist, you're a joke. Just know that you are a terrible person and you can take that forgiveness and <laughs> just fuck it. Just fuck that forgiveness right off. You are just as bad as Emily, if not worse, for supporting a mob with no evidence while claiming to do all this research and claiming to care about your friends or anything. I talked to you so many times and you once cried on stream saying if Shannon was in trouble, she would tell me not to defend her because she's a good person. And when I told you not to do that, you were like, well, that's sign she's guilty. Even though there's evidence to say I'm not and no evidence to say I am. The whole purpose of the video and document was to shit on Emily as much as she could, get the last word in before the end of 2021, and capitalize on that YouTube ad revenue for one last time before leaving the internet for good. The video got fucked the moment it was released, with a massive amount of dislikes when it came out, and even more dislikes now as of today. People made their videos on it, I pulled a sick ratio on the original upload, and everyone kinda just laughed at Shannon and moved on afterwards. It gets better though, because it turns out the document used for the video in the description was the revised version and the original draft would leak out to the public and people would see Shannon even acting more unhinged than she did in the very video. Now most of the original document is things worded differently and more charged language used throughout, but the main differences include the original being 112 pages versus 90 pages from the revised one, Creepshow Art being a lot more unhinged with their script overall, and most of the original talking shit about a decent chunk of people she was friends with, cutting out most of it in the revised version save for the tipster part, as she really didn't like that guy whatsoever and hated him so much she still decided to shit on him in the final release. There really isn't much more to say about the original version to be honest, it's mainly just an even more unhinged look at Shannon's thought process when making the document and planning the video and how crazy she is. Of course after this video came out, Emily was made well aware of it, and she had a couple more things to say about Shannon and what she did to her throughout their entire time on the internet. 
On February 8th, 2022, Emily Artful will release her latest video titled, I'm Done Shannon, going over the video that was made on her and rebuting everything that Shannon had said in her own video and going into detail on certain parts for her clarification's sake. Emily explains that yeah, she was messed up when she was younger, but she has since learned and grown from that to become a better person overall. Regardless of Shannon's fucked upness, I have to also sit here and acknowledge my fucked upness at some of the comments I had posted in my early 20s. Something that I just can't stand is when a creator is called out for something and in their apology they claim they were a different person back then. The things that I posted did not come from a different person. That was still me. I have done a lot of work to scrutinize and analyze my past actions and to try and grow and change from them. And the work isn't over. It will never be over. I'm okay being confronted with these truths because I need to see them and I need to be reminded of them to continue to make better choices, not only for myself, but for my children and the people who I surround myself with. Emily goes into detail on the rumors that she was forced into cam work by her ex-boyfriend and posts a clip of a conversation with the man himself explaining that he wasn't doing any of that to her at all and that it was Shannon trying to stir up a narrative to make Emily look bad. I've already adamantly said that Bob did not at all in any way, shape, or form force me to do anything that I didn't want to do, ever. It's hard to convey that, right? That I, I don't, I can't, I'm not going to force anyone to do something like that. I, I wanted you to be employed, but I didn't, I, you know, and I knew it was a difficult time for money, but I can't, I mean, it, it does hurt me that that is sort of the accusation or that was the, the lens that it was seen through at least by Shannon. And no. I think, you know, if you compile every word that everyone, that someone says, I'm sure, I'm sure you can find a way to use it against them, especially when it's taken out of context. And that's what yeah. I think a lot of the information is. I mean, when you force a situation, when you've tried your best to fill in the holes, if you've been following someone adamantly for years, but can't see the parts that are not, that you're not privy to, then you can write a you can write any conclusion that you want and somehow justify it. Emily would catch Shannon in a lie and explain everything to the people watching, showing how Shannon had been lying to her for years. In the conversation I had with Shannon in 2018, she claimed that the Brita account was a malicious stalker, even though Brita was supposed to be a throwaway account made by the stalker's sibling, which is another bizarre inconsistency. She also claimed that they had deleted their account, which we know not to be true. In order for what Shannon has said to be true, the 15-year-old stalker would have also had to have an account called Brita Filter. They would have had to message Shannon on that account, then delete their account. Then afterwards, the sibling would have stumbled across all the evidence of stalking, and then they would create a burner account, also naming it Brita Filter, and then they reached out to me. Which doesn't make sense to me, because if I were the older sibling in this situation, and I saw that my younger sibling was harassing someone by the name of Brita Filter, I wouldn't think to then name my burner account, the account that I'm going to use to reach out to this person, Brita Filter. I feel for like a lot of Shannon's story and her defense, you really have to suspend your disbelief for all of these inconsistencies and coincidences, and the things that do make a little bit of sense she's being dishonest about. One of the best parts by far is when Emily exposes Shannon for scamming not once, but twice, and is honestly just the icing on the cake of how much of an asshole she is. And not only has she hurt her friends, but she's hurt fellow artists as well. Something that really bothers me is that in Shannon's unedited Google Doc, she goes on to accuse Skittles Juice, an artist that she had commissioned and never paid in full, of being a scam artist. She claims that she had sent Skittles $250 for the first payment of a commission, but implies that Skittles lied and said they did not receive the initial payment so that Shannon would send another payment and Skittles could then keep both payments. Skittles shows receipts that they actually did not receive the first payment when originally scheduled, and that Shannon not only acknowledged this, but also said she had sent the payment to another artist by accident. Shannon then sent over the $250, Skittles completed the commission, but then Shannon disappeared before Skittles could collect the second payment of $250, as the commission was priced at $500 total. It's laughable that Shannon is trying to call Skittles Juice, an incredibly talented and reputable artist, a scam artist, when she herself allegedly scammed one of her viewers out of $400. And to be fair, this is completely unrelated to any claims made against me specifically, but this person came to 
to me with valid evidence and I believe they have a right to be heard, especially after Shannon tried to call another artist a scam artist. This ex-fan, who I am going to call M, had reached out to Shannon wanting to support her channel in some way. Shannon and M agreed that M would send Shannon $400 and Shannon would do a speed paint of M's character in one of her videos as well as give M and their passion project a shout out. Shannon posted a video but only gave M a shout out and did not fulfill the rest of the agreement. The creator of this project is incredibly passionate about it and has put some of her own life savings, actually most of her life savings, into it. But I'm going to include links below so you can follow their Twitter for updates, see exclusive scenes first, and get a link to their Indiegogo campaign, which is trying to raise more funds so they can afford to put finishing touches on the movie and make it the best it can be. Like I said, the creator of this project poured her life savings into this, which amounts to over $15,000 of her own money going into this project. M very gently reminded Shannon of the speed paint at a later date, but Shannon claimed she was not able to make a full speed paint at that point in time, but she would eventually make a dedicated art piece closer to the release date of M's passion project. She made sure to let M know that she would be doing it unpaid. And the unpaid part just rubs me completely the wrong way because this is what Shannon owed M in the first place, but she was now regarding it more as an act of charity than the completion of a commission. Time went by and Shannon stopped responding to M. M even allegedly tried to donate additional money to Shannon during her live streams in order to try and get Shannon's attention. After that interaction on Discord, Shannon went on to unfollow M on Twitter and M never received the rest of her commission. The video is another fantastic insight on not only Emily, but also Shannon, and how she would do whatever she could to make someone look bad, making up lies and coming to conclusions based off little to no evidence simply because she didn't like the person. All of Emily's videos are very interesting to watch, and I recommend to check them out on your own time to get real insight on how badly Creepshow Art was fucking with her. Because this is a clear case of a stalker wanting to tear someone down simply because they didn't like them. Of course, soon after Emily Artful's video came out, Creepshow Art would go down from around 325,000 subscribers to the current number of 307,000 subscribers, meaning that she lost a total of almost 200,000 subscribers since the drama went down, a little under half of her entire audience since she started YouTube. That's all of the Creepshow Art saga a year after everything went down. A person that was one of the most successful art channels on YouTube is now a ghost in the wind with no one hearing from her publicly since she dropped that video all the way back on New Year's Day. It's not a shame at all that she's gone, she's another example of a fake person who uses people for her own personal gain, whenever she didn't need someone anymore she would drop them, and on top of all that, a stalker to a person who didn't deserve any of that to happen to them. What do you guys think about Creepshow Art? It's clear her internet career is over and nobody would dare associate with her anymore after learning of how much of an asshole she is. It's a good riddance if you ask me. You can't really do much now other than reflect and learn upon this experience and try to apply it to your life on any people you may know who act similar to her, as Shannon is just one of many manipulative people out there on the internet. Make sure to tell me your opinions in the comments below. Thank you for watching today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, with all of that out of the way, I will see you guys later.